please remain standing for the prayer and continue standing for the singing of the national anthem. Dear Lord, we thank you for bringing us here on this joyous occasion. We thank you for all the hard work and the perseverance of these graduates, and we thank you for the support of the family and friends gathered here, and others, more numerous to mention, who could not make it. We ask that you will help us to experience a joyous occasion and take people home safely afterwards, and these graduates will be able to start their professional life on a great note. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. My name is Dr. Eric Russell, and I have the honor today of participating in this graduation. Um, I was asked to do this part on behalf of Dr. Ashley Cleveland, who could not be here today, and so she kindly asked me to uh, fill in today, and I'm very honored to do so. Uh, I'm the Associate Professor for the Center of Academics and Chair for Chiropractic Sciences, and I'm very pleased to welcome everyone today, the graduates, family and friends of the graduates, visitors, and guests. We are so happy that you're here to share with us today on this joyous occasion. Thank you for being with us. Parker, Parker University officially opens in September 1982. The charter class graduated in August 1985. Today we are participating in the 96th commencement of Parker University. To date, we have 6,950 students that have graduated. There are 51 graduates in this class, making a total after today's ceremony of 7,001. If I read the program correctly, Alicia, your 7,000 will be no balloons or any, anything that happens when that occurs. Let me introduce the platform party. Our distinguished president, Dr. Bill Morgan. Uh, please. <laughs> dean Michael Johnson, he's Dean of Student Affairs. <laughs> Dr. Oliver Smith, Chairman of the Board of Parker University Board of Trustees. Dr. Amy Wood, Chair of the Parker University Alumni Association. And someone you may be familiar with, Dr. Jean Giggleman, our commencement speaker for today. Every university has, uh, it takes a team to do what we do to produce great students and great future chiropractors. So we wanna recognize the Board of Trustees. There's several members of the Parker University Board of Trustees joining us today for our celebration. Please join me in recognizing this group of leaders and thanking them for their service. Please stand to be recognized. It is also appropriate and important to recognize a group of dedicated individuals who have given much time and effort to assist these graduates to achieve their goals and make this day possible. We at Parker believe we have the finest faculty and staff of any institution in the world. 
I would like the faculty and staff to please stand and receive their acknowledgement for their efforts. Carrying the ceremonial mace in today's commencement program is our Faculty Senate President, Dr. Lori Baggett. We have two faculty members that are serving as faculty marshals today. They are Dr. John Marth and Dr. Mike Raper. And also we have a faculty member who would be assisting in hooding of the candidates. It's Dr. Michael Perryman. Thank you for your assistance in this commencement program. We'd also like to thank the Student Senate for their assistance in providing ushers for today's commencement program. We greatly appreciate your help. What I'd like to do now is bring up Dean Michael Johnson, who will be doing the salutatorian and valedictorian process. The valedictorian and salutatorian are very special designations in American higher education. The salutatorian represents the someone who's the, given the welcoming address, the first student to give the welcoming address. It also represents the student with the second highest grade point average at Parker University. The issue of salutatorian has a 3.79 GPA, which rep rep represents outstanding accomplishment at Parker University. Please join me in welcoming Randall Searle. Dr. Morgan, members of the board, <clears throat> faculty, staff, friends and family, and graduates. Welcome, and thank you for coming to celebrate this day with us. <clears throat> I don't know who's more, more excited, the graduates or the administration and faculty. Um, all joking aside, as I began looking back at our time here, there's one thing that came to mind throughout our time, and that's the influence that we had on Parker University and its future students. We've had people both in and out of the spotlight doing all that they can to better our profession and, Bar and better Parker University. There have been ind individuals that have led clubs to become better than they have ever been before. We've also had those that have influenced Senate and the Constitution, while others have, made, have helped shape new student orientation to also be better than it ever has before. We even had a couple of you recently who had the opportunity to speak at Focus. A good friend and mentor has recently talked a lot about creating a legacy. Merriam Webster defines legacy as something that is transmitted or received from a predecessor. I believe that we have created a legacy while here at Parker. We have forever changed the culture at Parker University, and now that our time at Parker is over, it is time to start a new legacy. Starting tomorrow, each one of us will have the opportunity to change our communities. In the big idea, B.J. Palmer states, a slip on the snowy sidewalk in the winter is a small thing. It happens to millions. A fall from a ladder in the summer is a small thing. It also happens to millions. The slip or fall produces a subluxation. The subluxation is a small thing. However, that subluxation produces a diseased body and brain. That is a big thing to that man. Multiply that sick man by a thousand and you control the physical and mental welfare of a city. Multiply that man by 130 million and you forecast and can prophesy the physical and mental status of a nation. So the slip or fall, the subluxation, pressure, flow of mental images and dis-ease are big enough to control the thoughts and actions of a nation. Now comes a man or woman and one man or woman is a small thing. This man or woman gives an adjustment. The adjustment is a small thing. The adjustment replaces the subluxation. That is a small thing. The adjusted, the, the adjusted subluxation is a small thing. However, this restores health to a man. This is a big thing to that man. Multiply that well man by a thousand and you step up the physical and mental, welf mental welfare of a city. Multiply that well man by a million and you increase the efficiency of a state. 
Multiply that well man by 130 million and you have produced a healthy, wealthy, and better race for posterity. So the adjustment of the subluxation is big enough to rebuild the thoughts and actions of the world. The idea that knows the idea that knows the cause that can correct the cause of dis-ease is one of the biggest ideas known. Without it, nations fall. With it, nations rise. This is the biggest idea I know of. Starting tomorrow, each one of us have the opportunity to change the world one person at a time. In order to do that, we must continue to live the Parker principles of being pr present time conscious with every single patient and individual that we come in contact with. And we must develop a compassion to serve that is greater than a compulsion to survive. As we focus on serving each individual we come in contact with, we will not only forever change that individual, but we will also change our communities and collectively the world. Thank you. Thank you, Ray. The word valedictorian, taken from the Latin root valedicere, meaning to bid farewell. In today's use, we use it as the final student speaker at a graduation ceremony and a student with the highest grade point average. This, was, this year's valedictorian has a 3.97 GPA. Yeah. The rank of first in class is outstanding. Please join me in welcoming Ivy Brown. Fellow graduates, I want to share a few words by Johann Wolfgang von Gut that really speak to me as we're starting out on this next step of our journey. What you get by achieving your goals is not as important as what you become achieving your goals. Every single graduate here today has experienced massive growth over the past few years, but that growth isn't over yet. We must stay vigilant that we are shaping ourselves into trustworthy and honorable individuals. There will be many opportunities to compromise your values, but you must stay true. Do not waver. Avoid the temptations that will be faced daily. As we branch out on our separate ways, remember what inspired you in the first place. You're the only person to fully understand what brought you to this school three and a half years ago, and you're the only person to understand what brought you through it. Starting today, the weight of your future is yours to bear. Building a client base, making sure you can cover your overhead, paying back your student loans, and hopefully maintaining your relationships. These burdens are a part of meeting the world. They're unavoidable. But they do not get to dictate how you approach them. I implore every single one of you to rise up and meet these challenges with the same zeal that you have approached your education. Do not expect patients to seek you out, but welcome every person with the gift of your passion. Do not become mired in the pursuit of commercial gain, but rather envelop yourself and your practice in every opportunity to better the lives of your patients. Do not resign yourself to your financial obligations, but rather give back generously and embolden those that have not had your opportunities. Do not become timid with those whom you have relied upon, but rather charge yourself to forge deeper and more meaningful bonds. Through these last few years, every single one of us has discovered a new version of ourselves. In this time, we have defined and redefined our values, each time striving to uncover our true selves. Your values, however, belong to you alone. Should they revolve around your desire to help your fellow man, see to it that you leave the world a better place or simply to do no harm. Only you can define what should be of true importance in your life. Leaving here today, there will be individuals and organizations that will try to sell you on their viewpoint, attempt to sully your values in order to advance themselves. Do not let anyone come between you and your, your beliefs. For once they are lost, they are not easily regained. Finally, I call each and every one of you to become the best doctor that you can be. Remember, your passion is yours alone. Your fire will burn brightest when you feed it. No one else will tend it like you will. Guys, we've all worked really hard to get here today. We've made it, 
Congratulations. Way to go. <laughs> Great job, Ivy and Randall. Uh, next, I'd like to bring up the president of the university, Dr. Bill Morgan. Thank you, Dean Johnson. Big day here. Each, each commencement, the James W. Parker Philosophy Award Committee selects a member of the graduating class to be recognized for the, except, for the exceptional abilities of espousing the philosophy, science, and art of chiropractic as well as incorporating into his or her professional, professional philosophy those principles which have become the hallmark of Parker College of Chiropractic. This year's recipient is Matthew Kolker. Yay. Now it's my great honor to bring up the chairman of the Board of Trustees, Dr. Oliver Smith. It's indeed an honor today to present the Robert Suppeth Service and Leadership Award. Dr. Robert Suppeth Service and Leadership Award is awarded to a graduating student upon the recommendation of a select committee comprised of faculty, staff, and administrators in recognition of his or her dedication and service that reflects the exemplary service and leadership of Dr. Suppeth, who served as chair of the Board of Trustees from 1987 to 2003. Our recipient this year is Randall Sear. Ivy was afraid there for a second you're going to quote the famous philosopher and classmate Hans Wolfgang, and I was going to have to pull you off the stage for a second. You know, backstage, um, you, you never forget what it's like to, to be a graduate, and I think every chiropractor, no matter how long they've been in practice and how long they've been in chiropractic education, remembers the moment that you guys are going through very vividly through their mind. It, it definitely enters mind every time. And to be part of a graduation is a, is a big deal for you know, an administrator or as a president or a distinguished faculty member. And backstage, I was, I was observing our president, uh, Dr. Bill Morgan, and your commencement speaker for today, Dr. Gene Giggleman, spar with each other a little bit around, when I get the mic, be prepared for what I'm going to say. And the other one's like, be prepared for what I'm going to say. Dr. Giggleman failed to recognize that I get to introduce him today, so he was not paying attention to the other threat that loomed that day. You know, in your program, there is um, a, a great bio of Dr. Gene Giggleman and all that he has accomplished in his very distinguished career, and definitely everything he's done to make Parker University great. Um, he. We had a, a private moment over there. He's like, you gonna read that? And I'm like, nope, I'm just gonna go for it. So, you know, a couple observations. Number one is, it's easy to be a teacher that's liked, and it's easy to be a teacher that's tough. And it's very difficult to be a teacher that is both loved and respected. And I think Dr. Gene Giggleman definitely does that. His career at Parker University has, uh, I believe, has gone over 30 years if that's correct, and um, has the same passion and vigor uh, towards teaching to making people better chiropractors to, to be the best they can be, and definitely to espouse the Parker principles. 
And I think Dr. Jean Giggleman is one of those people that truly espouses the Parker principles as put forward by Dr. Jim Parker. Loving service is my first technique. Um, and he continues to inspire, he continues to accomplish. And the only thing he wanted me to point out is if you look at um, his commencement speaker bio, it says Gene Giggleman, DC. He's a veterinarian, but to us, he's also a DC. So please help me welcome Dr. Gene Giggleman. I'm not sure how to follow that, I'll be honest with you. But I am very honored to be here today. I'm honored to be able to share with you during this time of your celebration and to be with you the first day as you become future doctors of chiropractic. I'm also honored to have in the audience my wife, my two daughters, my two son-in-laws, and two of my four grandchildren. So they're here today as well, so that's good. You know, I was thinking when I was told I was gonna be your speaker, I was just, I was overcome with emotion and I just can't tell you how blessed and privileged I am to be here. But I was really trying to think what I wanted to tell you. You know, one, one last little bit of wisdom, maybe one last little pop test or something, you know, something I could throw at you, one last MACA question, uh, you know, something I could do. But I, I thought, and I, I really thought I said, you know, if, if I was going to write each one of you a letter, like a, a personal letter, just telling you what I wanted to, to you know, to, you to leave the school with, some last bit of wisdom. Uh, and so I sat down and I began to write a letter. And what happened over the next two or three weeks was this letter evolved. And so what I want to do this morning is, is, and bear with me, but I want to read you the letter I wrote you. And so if I can, and so here it goes. Dear graduating class of 2000. 17, August 2017. You're undergoing an incredible experience right now. The whole world is opening up to you. You completed something that very few people can complete, something very difficult, something that took a great deal of dedication, persistence, toil, sweat, and something that even caused you at times to wonder why you were here in the first place. But now you sit in this coveted seat and you can say, I did it, yes. The key to a successful life is not talent. It's not being the smartest or even the best looking kid on the block. The key to a successful life is having resilience, passion, and focus. These three traits will help you develop your ability to deal with inevitable failures, guide you to learn from your mistakes, allow you to heal yourself emotionally, physically, or financially, and to continue moving forward. You should not worry when failure comes your way because I think if you read, most of the most successful people in the world were also some of the biggest failures. But what really, what really separated them from anyone else is how they handled those failures. You should strive to live your life to the fullest. Keep your focus on the things that really matter and these traits, resilience, passion, and focus. These three traits were also key elements in the life of the person who founded this great institution, Dr. James W. Parker. He had his fair share of failures but he never let them stop him from accomplishing his goals. Now, while I was deciding what I wanted to share with you in this letter I'm writing you, it came to me that I'm one of the few relics here at Parker, one of the few individuals still working here who actually worked with a new Dr. Parker, who, by the way, passed away 20 years ago this year. He died in 1997. I am one of the few who taught at the school prior to him even being the president. So I want to kind of share with you from a firsthand knowledge your roots. I think it's important for you to know who you are as a Parker graduate and to know those roots. So I wanna share with you how you got here today and also try to tie in those three key principles of success, resilience, passion, and focus into that story. Dr. Parker was a man of boundless energy, unwavering resilience, expansive vision, profound focus, and contagious passion. He possessed a keen business acumen and he had a servant's heart. He was a 1946 graduate from Palmer School of Chiropractic. He operated two successful practices in Illinois and then went on to build 18 practices throughout the great state of Texas. He got his pilot's license and would fly his airplane from practice to practice to keep tabs on them all. Well, his practice success soon had many DCs seeking his advice, so in 1951, he formed the Parker School of Professional Success, what we old timers call PSPS, right? That's right. And he took the seminars on the road. In no time, PSPS was the largest gathering of chiropractors in the world, and Dr. Parker was becoming quite a celebrity. He knew many chiropractors were struggling in practice. 
He knew he, he had received a good education chiropractically wise that taught him how to be a good adjuster, yet he saw a void in his educational process. And that void was in the specifics of how to run a practice from a business perspective. He saw chiropractors lacked an organized patient filing system, lacked organized recall notifications, follow-up procedures, no real billing methods, poorly organized means to handle accounts receivable, and no structured patient recruitment procedures. In other words, they were great doctors, great adjusters, but they were lousy business people. So he set about the task of, of taking all of his business practices and making them commercially available. He formed Share Products International, which was a company to sell all the paper products that he had. And uh, this was before computers, so everything was paper back in those days. He knew they also had to teach chiropractors how to use these products, how to learn to sell themselves, how to retain patients, how to get referrals, and how to sell chiropractic. A 1987 Parker School of Professional Success seminar brochure claimed that over 125,000 doctors of chiropractic, spouses, and staff assistants worldwide, over two-thirds of all practicing chiropractors have attended nearly 300 Parker seminars more than 400,000 times collectively resulting in millions and millions of additional patients being served and surely resulting in at least a billion dollars of extra chiropractic earnings. And that was back in 87, so that's a lot more than today, a lot more today than then. They say Dr. D.D. Palmer founded chiropractic, Dr. B.J. Palmer developed chiropractic, and Dr. James W. Pa Parker promoted chiropractic. So there you have the three of them, the founder, the developer, and the promoter. Dr. Parker took this profession at a time when it was still under major attack by the medical profession. Chiropractors were being put in jail for practicing their healing art. Chiropractors had a very poor professional self-image and low self-esteem. They were struggling in practice, and Dr. Jim realized this, and through PSPS, he taught his fellow chiropractor how to be successful. He taught them how to be proud of themselves, because the one reality is chiropractic works, and we all know that. Most of us in this room, except for my good friend, Dr. Jack Donovan, and unfortunately, Dr. Jack's not here this morning, but have, ne have never had to worry about putting, being put in jail for practicing chiropractic. But in Dr. Jim's day, that was a real reality. Chiropractors would attend Dr. Parker's PSPS seminars and then order their office supplies they needed from Cher. It was during one of these PSPS seminars that Parker College was conceived. Dr. Jim was at the MGM Hotel in Las Vegas on the top floor in the presidential suite when fire broke out in the lower levels. The hotel quickly filled with smoke and trapped the people in the upper floors. Dr. Jim, fearing for his life, went out onto the balcony of the roof, and this is where he conceived the idea of the college. He said to himself, if he were able to get out of this alive, he would build a college where he could teach chiropractors from the very first how to be successful in practice and, how to, and tie his college in with Parker's seminars to teach his students the skills of business. He would build a college as his legacy to chiropractic. Well, as fate had it, a helicopter rescued him from the upper floor, and as soon as he hit the ground, he started the wheels in motion of building the school. Now, fast forward. Building on the educational aspirations that had begun with the seminars, Dr. Parker opened the Parker College of Chiropractic in Irving, Texas, in an old church building off Grawweiler Road in, on September 12, 1982. The charter class had 27 students, and they started that time. These students began their academic journey to school, which was not accredited with the Council on Chiropractic Education. In fact, they were not even able to procure financial aid, and how they got financial aid was through North Lake College because Parker had arranged with North Lake kind of a, a joint a relationship. So the students through North Lake got financial aid to even go to school here at Parker. The college was building a curriculum one class at a time back in those days, and they were looking for teachers. In May of 1983, I got a phone call from Dr. Carl Sobert uh, looking for teachers to teach at this new chiropractic school uh, in Irving. I was working at Northlake at the time, supplementing my income, uh, teaching AMP there, and Dr. Bob Agnew gave Dr. Salbert my name. The interview process was interesting. I, I came to the school to interview with Dr. Ted Mortar. Anybody know who Dr. Mortar is? Some of us old timers do. And Dr. Mortar and I sat down, he asked me if I knew what chiropractic was, and I had never been to a chiropractor, and I said, no, I really don't. And he spent the next four hours educating me what chiropractic was. And, and, but really turned out good. I, I, you know, it, it was, it was, I was fascinated. For the first time, I heard of a healing art that addressed the why of why people or animals get sick. You know, in school, I've been taught that if, if one dog got an infection and another dog in the household didn't, it was bad luck or, or the dog's poor immune system. 
but never had I heard the concept about the nervous system being the master system that controlled all other systems. And if something was wrong with the nervous system, then the body can't function normally. And so it made sense to me. And then I heard about this thing called a subluxation, which was an interference of normal nervous system function. While skeptical, I was fascinated, so I took the job. And that was in 1983. Brahm and I started on the, on the same date back in May 1983, so we've both been here since then. They were teaching a charter class pathology in those days of the third trimester of what was in a nine trimester system. These charter class students believed in Dr. Parker and took a huge risk, if you think about it, to start this journey not even knowing if they would ever get a license to practice. Yet they had the faith, confidence, and belief in Dr. Parker, his product, his services, and his ideas. Now, fast forward to 2017. Here you are today, graduating from a fully accredited college, part of a larger university which is also fully accredited. You no longer have to fear imprisonment for practicing your healing art. You're graduating from a school that was founded on one man's vision to build an institution that produces not just a great doctor, but a great business person. You do not yet know the power and strength of the education you have received here at Parker, but you will reap the benefits of this education for the very rest of your life. Dr. Parker had a burning passion and love for chiropractic. He lived and breathed chiropractic. Then when the time came, he lived and breathed Parker College. He worked many long hours into the wee hours of the morning to see if this college was successful. He gave millions of dollars of his personal fortune to this school and ultimately gave his, his life and his health to this school so that you could receive the education you got here at Parker. He loved this school and he loved the students. He never compromised when it came to chiropractic or to his school. He accepted only the best out of his faculty and out of facilities so that you would receive the best education possible. He dreamed big dreams and he had the personal motivation the resilience, the focus and passion and strength to see them through. Yet he always had time for you, the student. He would walk out in the courtyard speaking to students and answering their questions. In those days, you had to write an essay before you came to Parker. And, and I've literally sat there and watched him read every single student essay that he was sent back in those days. So he knew you, he knew who you were. And when he spoke to you, he looked you in the eye and, he, and he, he spoke back with you. He didn't talk to you, he talked with you. He loved you. And when you went to Parker, you became part of his family. I urge you to emulate our founder and to do whatever it is that you do with a burning passion. Do it because you love it and because you, you believe in its importance. Turn away from the easy life of complacency, the condescending nature of most people, and the addiction of materialism. Be resilient and do not give in to the naysayers. Stand strong on the founding principles of chiropractic, focusing on your patients, using what you were taught and trained to do, bringing them to a higher level of wellness. Put down your smartphones and notice people. Look at their faces, watch them, immerse yourself in them. Watch the way they walk, the way they move. Know your patience as you know yourself. Do not be distracted by the technology of today. Learn to listen and listen intently. Focus on what your patients are saying to you. Be worthy of the gifts with which you've been blessed. Accept the quirks that make you unique. Be proud of who you are and embrace your opportunities with a burning hunger and zeal. And remember, to never compromise who you are. Be true to yourself. You are a doctor. You are a doctor of chiropractic. Yeah. Thank you. Have big dreams and never stop dreaming. Push yourself hard, but be nice to yourself and be nice to those around you. Love the people and things in life with, that you love with all of your strength. Live in love with a sense of urgency. Live every day if it was, was stolen from death. As Christ says, and I paraphrase, there is really but one commandment, and that is to love and respect everyone as you love and respect yourself. Love lights more fires than hate extinguishes. Love is the antidote for hate. Never look down on someone unless you're reaching down to pick them up. Love them with passion. Loving service should be your first technique. Now more than ever, America needs what you have to offer. If you fight for your seat at the healthcare table, if you set a better example, if you persevere in what you have decided to do with your life, I have complete faith that not only will you succeed, but that through you, our world will be a better place. That more and more of the world will begin to see the benefits of chiropractic and the wellness model you have to offer them. In doing so, we may finally get away from the current paradigm of sickness care and salvage medicine. You are carrying the light ignited by the founder, the developer, and the promoter of chiropractic. Your opportunity is now, because commencement means beginning, not end. You will never get this chance again. Do not waste your moment in the sun. 
Go forth with all you have. Be doggedly resilient, profoundly passionate, and fiercely focused on what's truly important in life. Be the best you can be. So at the end of the day, when the sun is finally setting, they can say to you, well done, doctor. Well done. I'll leave you with one last thought. The word doctor means teacher. Dr. Jim was a teacher and a darn good one. You are, you are all teachers now. You have a great influence upon your patients, your friends, and your families. In the book of James, chapter 3, verse 1, it says, Teachers are held to a higher standard because they have the power to influence and change people's lives. You are now held to a higher standard. You are now a member of a very select group of people. I personally take this charge very seriously. I deeply care for each and every one of you. I've always tried to be 100% honest with you. I've tried to guide you down the path with the utmost diligence. In my 63 years of living, I've been exposed to many philosophies, religions, and belief systems. My intellectual mind has dissected and questioned all that I was told in an attempt to discover the truth. It took me a long time to realize that truth is not always realized with the mind, but that when we see real truth, we see it in our hearts. Share this truth with people. There are spiritual laws that are far more exacting than, excuse me, there's spiritual laws that are far more exacting than physical laws. You've received the best education possible and you're armed with knowledge, the skills, the philosophy to achieve success beyond your wildest dreams. If Dr. Jim was alive today, he'd be very proud of each and every one of you. I want you to remember your roots and be very proud of them. Our new president, Dr. Bill Morgan, is very much like Dr. Jim in that he's a mover and a shaker and not just a talker. He will take this institution to the next level and beyond, and I am very proud to serve under his leadership. Now, in closing, deal with those inevitable failures you will have. Learn from your mistakes and focus on what really matters in life, not wasting your time on what doesn't. Continue to always move forward. Again, I thank you for this honor. Now, I challenge you to make us all proud of you and to make this world a better and healthier place for us all to live in. As you commence, may God bless each and every one of you, and I love you all. Dr. G, God bless. And I can stay in here forever, too, and make it continue, so. Um, I think you can see why he's a darn good veterinarian, a honorary chiropractor, and someone who embodies the Parker Principles. So thank you for that speech, Dr. Giggleman. All right, let's get to why you guys are here. <laughs> I know, I'm surprised you guys have kept your uh, decorum so far. Um, Parker University is empowered by the accreditation of the Southern Association of College and Schools in the state of Texas to award a Bachelor's of Science degree with majors in anatomy and health and wellness. On a special day, we recognize those students who have earned a Bachelor of Science degree while working concurrently towards their Doctor of Chiropractic degree. There are seven students in this graduating class who have completed all the requirements of the Bachelor of Science degree with a major of anatomy. Will the students receiving the Bachelor's of Science with the major of anatomy please stand and be recognized? There are also seven students in this graduating class who have completed all the requirements of the Bachelor of Science degree with the major of Health and Wellness. Will the students receiving the Bachelor of Science with the major of Health and Wellness please stand and be recognized? Next, I'd like to turn the program over to Dean Johnson to do the presentation of candidates. Will the graduates please stand? Will those assisting in the conferring degrees please take your places? I present to you the graduating class of August 2017. The faculty have determined that each of these students has completed or will soon complete all their requirements for the degree and the faculty have certified them as being worthy of the title Doctor of Chiropractic with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Will the first four graduates please come forward? The rest of the graduates may be seated. 
Some of the graduates have family members who have a doctor in one of the healing arts. It's a Parker tradition to allow them to be presented with a diploma as well. Additionally, we have seven students who will be graduating with honors. Cum laude, 3.5 to 3.74, indicated with a blue cord. Magnum cum laude, 3.75 to 3.89, indicated with a silver cord. And summa cum laude, 3.9 to 4.0, indicated with a gold cord. Jorn Greg Bain. <laughs> Keith, Keith Allen Beachy. Alexander David Beatty. <laughs> Louis Pambit. Berturfo. <laughs> Cecilia Marina Betancourt, presented by her uncle Rick Swecker and Clifford Fisher. Malachi Walker Bolton, cum laude. <laughs> Ivy Elizabeth Brown, valedictorian, summa cum laude. Kyle, Kyle William Kenyon Clayton. <laughs> Daylin Ray Driscoll, cum laude. Milton Incasion Casada. Yeah. 
Adrian Janot Etherton, presented by Uncle Dr. Wade Etherton. David Farley. Terry Trent Gentry. <laughs> Fallon Harleen Gilbert. Terry Lynn Gilbert. <laughs> Caroline Evelyn Graham. Anna Elizabeth Graves. Dana Lois Harris, presented by her brother Bolden Harris and mom, Dr. Ellen Jens. Daniel Bernhard Hartman, presented by Dr. Brandon Washaka. Alyssa Erica Haynes.
Jacob Ryan Herring. Donna Renee Hopkins, presented by her brother, Dr. Thomas Henderson. Andrew Jackson III. Lauren Elizabeth Johnson, presented by her cousin, Dr. John Davis. Sharon Jeet, Core. Crystal Alexis Kendrick. <laughs> Matthew James Coker. Weston Reese Kurtz. Blake Allen Matlock. Jason Everett McCloskey.
Sophie Mills. Hans Wolfgang Moorbeck, Army, presented by his wife, Jessica Moorbeck. Jeffrey Lee Moody, magnum cum laude. Crystal Monique Moreland. Vu Tony Pham. <laughs> Richard Oval Pinner. Chessa Don Purser. Donald Keith Sadowski, Jr. The class president, Randall Charles Searle, salutatorium, magnum cum laude. Keelan Colburn Smith.
Mon Andrew Tran. Monica Valdez Trevino. Joshua Paul Valentine. Nicole Ashley Whitby, United States Army. Lacey Liana Wilson. Shelby Lorreen Wilson, cum laude. <laughs> Dane Kobe Wimmer. Representing Park University's 7,000th graduate, Alicia Cheyenne Young. Presented by her father, Dr. Tim Young. Melissa Ann Young, cum laude.
Ladies and gentlemen, please give another hand to our graduates. Or should I say our almost graduates? We've got a couple more things to do. <laughs> Next, I'd like to bring up to the stage uh, Dr. Amy Wood, the um, president of the Parker Alumni Association to administer the chiropractic oath. Graduates, will you please stand? And you need doctors of chiropractic, please stand as well. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I do hereby affirm before God and these assembled witnesses that I will keep this oath and life commitment to hold in esteem and respect those who taught me this chiropractic healing art. To follow the methods of treatment, which according to my ability and judgment, I consider for the highest benefits of my patient. To abstain from whatever is deleterious and unethical, and to stand ready at all times to serve my fellow man Without distinction, of race, creed, or color. without distinction of race, creed, or color. With purity, I will pass my life, purity, pass my life. And, practice my art. and practice my art. I will at all times consider the patients under my care to be of supreme importance. I will not spare myself in providing my patients The care I have been taught to give by my alma mater. I will keep inviolate all things revealed to me as a physician. While I continue to faithfully keep this oath, may it be granted to me to enjoy life in the practice of the chiropractic healing art. With respect to all people at all times. Congratulations. You may be seated. I think Parker is the buildings and the staff and everybody are sighing a collective sigh of relief. <laughs> Randy was not kidding when he said he didn't, he didn't know who was more happy to see this day, Parker or the class. This class has been the most involved class at Parker. I've known most of you from the first week I was there, very engaged, full of leadership. And what Randy said was correct. This class has changed the culture of Parker. I expect you to go out there and change the world. Don't lose the power that what you've got. You've got something special. And I, all the families and friends, you know what I'm talking about. They're, you know that better than me what kind of people they are. They're changers or shakers. And so, some things are difficult. They don't accept things as they are. They're going to change this world. I really expect great things from this class as you become alumni of Parker. I'm proud to be your president. I love you. I love being your president. I'm very proud that my name is on your diplomas. As you know, we really want to make the best adjusters in the world. And I'd like to invite you back. As you know, you come back for three years or to our seminars for free to our homecoming this October. We have a lineup of adjusters. I want you to continue to grow in the craft of a chiropractic. We have 
great confidence that you are going to change this profession for the good. You were given a coin today as you came across the stage. These coins are, they, they come from the tr tradition in the military. The Army Special Forces started this in Vietnam, where they had commemorative unit coins to honor their training and what got them to that place, but also to honor those who, who went before them, those who did go to jail, those chiropractors who, who created this profession. You look back to our founder, D.D. Palmer, who discovered chiropractic. What would you have done if you were the only chiropractor in the world? Would you build a practice, or would you change the world? I know you're going to change the world. These coins have upon them some of the Parker principles, and I'll have you help me complete them if you wouldn't mind. One of the things it says is loving service and develop a compassion to serve that is you got it. Here's the time. This is my favorite part. It's going to be your favorite part. And I'm going to love to be able to introduce you as doctors in a moment. Upon the recommendation of the faculty, and by the authority invested in me as president of Parker University, by the board of the trustees, and the great state of Texas, I hereby confer upon you the degree of doctor of chiropractic, and Bachelor of Science with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities pertaining. You may now move your tassel from the right side to the left. It is my pleasure to now present to you the 51 newest doctors of chiropractic. Stand up. I'd like to ask you to please join the Parker University community in celebrating the accomplishments of this graduating class. There is a reception honoring these graduates that will take place immediately after the commencement in the lobby. Please meet your graduate for pictures, refreshments, and continued congratulations from the faculty, staff, and administration. Well, it's appropriate that I was the first one to talk to you when you first came to Parker, and I'm the last one to talk to you. Now let's close the ceremony in prayer. I ask you to please bow your heads. Most gracious, almighty, and heavenly Father, thank you for this most special day in the lives of our graduates and those who have come here to help us celebrate this momentous occasion. Lord, I pray for your guidance in all matters and ask that you clearly show us how to conduct our lives with resilience, passion, and focus. Give us the desire to find ways to excel in our lives' work and to help us work together and encourage each other toward excellence. We ask that you challenge each of us to reach higher and farther and to push ourselves to be the best we can be. God, we thank you for Dr. Morgan, Dr. Cleveland, Dr. Bud Smith, the Board of Trustees, and the other distinguished guests here today for their leadership and for your continued blessings upon each of them. Thank you for touching the life of Dr. James W. Parker and providing him with the love, the vision, and the ability required to build this great academic institution. Thank you for allowing us faculty and staff the opportunity to provide the education and training necessary for these graduates to practice chiropractic so they may provide a positive change in this world one spine at a time. We ask that you continue to watch over and protect our military personnel who serve our country and protect our freedom. God, I ask that you teach us to love unconditionally. Let us learn to serve one another with a joyful heart, place in our hearts brotherly love and compassion for all living creatures, both human and animal. Now, as we close this ceremony, God, please grant each of us peace and teach us to be thankful for the many blessings you've bestowed upon us. Bless each family here who is represented and provide them safe patches back to their homes. Ask all these things in your holy name. Amen. Now, it really is showtime. <laughs>